Well, welcome, welcome to the Voice of Victory. This is Pastor Henry Madava. By the way, I'm coming to you from Kiev, Ukraine, and I believe in miracles. And that means the impossible can be possible. The natural can give in to the supernatural. The sin can be affected by the unseen. And you can change your life for the good when you invite God into your life. He can do the impossible. Praise God. By the way, you know, the first time I ever thought about God was not because I heard somebody preaching. I used to hear songs being sung, Christian songs. To me, that was our tradition. But the first time I ever thought about God was when I was looking at the stars way back in Africa and Zimbabwe at night when you're in the village. I mean, the stars are so bright. And I was thinking, wait a minute, is anybody walking on those stars? And then I said, who created them? Who holds them together? What's the force behind those stars? And then the sun in the morning, I mean, I began to understand somebody must have created the stars, the sun, the moon. And from geography, I knew some of these stars, they are planets bigger than our, our Earth. So I was beginning to think, so wait a minute, whoever created all that must be way bigger than his creation, way more powerful. I mean, the first revelation, or one of the main sources of revelation about God, is God as a creator. When you see it, look at his creation, you know who he is. Did you realize his art of creation? He created human beings with eyes on their heads, ears on their head, their mouth is on their head. Birds, the same thing. Crocodiles even, the same thing. Lions, the same thing. So when I look at lions and mosquitoes, I realize he's the same artist. He made them very similar because God is a creator and he loves to make things beautiful. And he loves to leave his handwriting in all the creation. God is a creator and he wants to reveal himself to you. His power, his knowledge, his wisdom, his ability through creation. Let's listen to this message. It will open your eyes in many ways. God bless you as you listen. The title of my sermon is God is my creator. The point is that all interactions of people or anyone with God are revealed in his creation. God revealed himself to us as our savior, healer, and in many other ways. But first of all, God revealed to us himself as our creator. Originally, trees, people, and everyone else knew our God as our creator. That's why naturally, the very first revelation about God and the very first understanding of how God works, how He moves, what God does, and what He requires from us, we can find in all of His creation. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 6, it says here, You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven the heaven of heavens, along with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. The very first conclusion we can make from what we just read is that God is great. He can do all things. He is all-powerful. He is able to create where nothing exists. Please note, when God created, was something there? No, nothing at all. The Bible even says that God created visible things from invisible. 
The first conclusion today is God is able to create what was not there in your life. That which was not expected, or even what was not suspected, He is able to do all things. Say Amen. When we learn God's creation, we discover that God gives life. Say, God gives life. It means that's where there is death of any kind. God is able to give you life right there. So if there's anything in your life that died, you have the right to come to God and say, God, you are the one who gives life. That's why I'm asking, bring back to life what died in my life. But not only does He give life, but he also He protects what He creates. Please note, if He called you, He protects your calling. If He created you, He protects you. If He saved you, He protects you. But not only He protects what He creates, but God created everything for people. We have technologies today. What do you think? Do technologies appear by God's permission or in spite of God's permission? Do they appear according to God's desire or in spite of His desire? It happens with His permission, of course. He is the one who removes the curtain from time to time so that people could know more and more and more. It's a pity that the church gives all developments away to the children of the devil. They consider that the sign of holiness is that they do not use anything that is in the world, as they call it. Technology is not the world. Technology is God's ability to help our society. Say amen with me. But it relates not only to technologies. It relates both to technology and to financial riches. It is difficult to persuade me that God created all riches in the world for the devil to use. It would be mental if God created it, the devil was not in that equation. God didn't give all these technologies to the devil, but people of the devil, dedicated to him, they bring it to the devil. They get all those riches and spread the works of the devil. At the same time, the children of God consider that holiness is when I have nothing. And when I do nothing, and when it means that I am humble. But that's a demonic lie. Why? Because the devil wants to use everything to expand his kingdom through his people. That's why it is important for us to understand that God created everything for people, to expand his kingdom, and he hopes that we'll be involved quickly, and we will understand, and we will apply it, because he gives the sun and rain both to the righteous and to the unrighteous, but first to people who he gives is to his righteous people. God is not only can do all things, but God is a God of order. When I study the history of creation, I come to the conclusion that God is a God of order, clarity, and consistency. That's why when some people say that the presence of God means chaos, but there may be chaos, not because God is chaotic, but because we respond that way. We are people. Everyone responds to his own way. Say amen. But when everyone, when thing is finished, God's order comes. God's presence comes and the chaos that was there on the earth disappears and the order appears. Look what it says in the book of Genesis, chapter 1. I'll read from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning, the first day. God created it clearly. You are day, and you are night. Very clearly. See, clearly. But not only that, but also that he created all good things. Say, all good things. That's why, please notice, when God enters a person's life, that person is changed. 
for the better. God loves to give an estimate. If there was anything bad, he would remove it. But not only did he create all good things, but God also creates identities. Even the day is considered of two parts. You are the night, what shall I do? You'll make the darkness. Who can help me? The moon. I'll give a task to the moon and it will help you. Okay. And the Bible says about the moon and other celestial bodies that they acted during the night so that active life may go on during the night. And he said to the day, the sun will help you. Okay. Please note the identities. If God made sure that the day has its own identity, moreover, you have one. When a wife looks strange to her husband, or when a husband looks strange to his wife, it tells us that they are alive. If they were alike and like copies of each other and everything, then something in them would die. It should not ever be the purpose of a husband or wife to destroy the identities, the uniqueness of their spouses. God not only gives them identity, but he gave functions to each of them. When a person finds his or her purpose, the reason why they live, what their identity is from God, such a person will live a long and happy and satisfied life. The person who didn't find his purpose, why he or she lives, and doesn't fulfill it, even if you give them a lot of money and everything they need on earth, but if they don't find a reason why they were born, they will not have joy in their heart. Every creature created by God has its season and time. When a person misses his time and season, there is a danger that he will backslide from God. Don't miss your season. How can people become great men of God? They go into their time and season, but they don't lose consistency. That's how they develop. But when we miss our season, then everything becomes much more difficult. What could we do easy during our season? We'll be able to do it out of season. But how much more difficult and harder it is much better to catch your season. God is not only strong, and not only does he give order, but the word in, of his kingdom matters. And among everything related to the kingdom of God, the word of God is greatest authority except God himself. The reason number one is because God has created everything by his word. And today, everything we have in our lives among us is made by the word of God and by our own words. In the kingdom of God and creator that we are talking about, words have great authority. That is why if you want to be in this kingdom of good, standing before the king, love his word, speak his word, act according to his word, and you will be of high standing with the king of this kingdom, with our Lord God. His life is in us. Everything he has comes to us through his word. The person who ignores the word of God will not be able to go far with the Lord. He will not be able to, because it can be done only through His Word, and not only life, but also His blessings toward us and coming through His Word. The Word of God contains insight, everything a person needs. The Bible says in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning of God, with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Please note, everything was made through his word. That is why we need to love the word of God. We need to believe 
this word of God. When I believe the word of God and I believe his words, it gives me a chance to have live relationship with this God. I'll not be able to build my relationship with God if I do not trust His Word and if I do not trust God. The fourth and last point, God loves people. His love is as great as His power. The reasons why God loves people? Number one, God loves people because people are created according to God's image and likeness. Man represents God. We are representatives of the Lord God here. Can you imagine when we are to represent God and when God is looking at the earth and sees we represent the devil instead? It is so painful to him. He created us for himself. We are made in his image and likeness to represent him. He looks at us and we look at him and then we went and sold him to the devil for 200 or 300 dollars. It is very painful to him. Represent God to the utmost as you should please. Let all the people say, Amen. You see? He loves people because he created us in his image and likeness. We represent Him. Now, we have salvation because God wanted to express His love toward humanity. That's why, through salvation in Jesus Christ, God revealed His love to us. We are His pasture and His people. There is nothing on this earth that can separate us from the love of God while I am in Christ. The most important thing in life is to be in Christ. Psalm 100, verse 3. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. God is the shepherd of His pasture. When He says something, it is better to be obedient to Him. He knows that something is dangerous. When a pastor is trying to tell you something, don't call the pastor names. If you don't want to listen to it, especially when it relates to the pastor, and tell him, Pastor, thank you, but I will not listen to you. It would be better then if you pretend like you are obedient, but then you go and do the opposite or call him names. It's bad if we call the pastor names. Jesus said it is hard for you to kick against the goads. Jesus associates himself with pastors. He called them and He will protect them, especially when a pastor is not there and people are talking about Him. God will be involved radically much faster. That's why God is our shepherd. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. If God creates all new things, it means that God wants to bring all new things into our life. He wants to bring innovations, ideas, methods of development that we didn't have before. God wants to bring it to us. We learn from the creation that God is the source of all new things. Moreover, God is able to do great things out of nothing. He is our creator. He creates all new things. Everything comes from Him. And He gives us everything. God wants to create all new things in our life. Well, praise the Lord. What a wonderful God that we save. Any aspect of God that you look at is wonderful. His love, He's wonderful. His creation, He's wonderful. His salvation, He's wonderful. His knowledge, He's wonderful. His wisdom, He's wonderful. Whatever side you try to look at God from, He comes out wonderful. That's why I'm so excited about Jesus, excited about God. And by the way, I want you to know, you can know him personally. 
by receiving Jesus in your heart, this wonderful God becomes your father, your God, your savior, your deliverer, your healer. Having God in your life is the biggest asset you can ever have. God and you is the winning team. Invite Jesus into your heart. He will come in. He will forgive you. He will change your life. He will make things new. Jesus died for you. He shed his blood for you. He died so you may live. If you receive him, you will receive his life. And he will take away your sins. If you want that, pray with me this prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you. Forgive me all my sins. I believe in Jesus, that he's the son of God. And he died for me on the cross of Calvary. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer sincerely, God is now your father. And your sins are forgiven. Congratulations. You are now a child of God. You are born again. Please let me know so we can help you with some materials or give you information about the churches that are close to where you are. But God, the creator, is powerful enough not just to be able to save you, but to heal your body and to work miracles for you. I wanted to watch this short video of the miracles that God has done, and then I'll come back and pray with you. He knows the emptiness of your heart. And tonight, He has come to rescue you, to help you, to heal you, to deliver you. Receive from Jesus. Jesus loves the wrestlers. Yes. She had a pinched nerve in her spine. Pain was so strong that she felt it in her ribs and it was hard for her to breathe. During the prayer, she felt that pain had completely gone. For long have you had that pain? For two months, that's for sure. And what about now? It's disappeared. Yes, it did. I, I can even touch it and feel no pain. No pain at all. Lord, I thank you for this miracle. Olga Karpivna came to this festival with a strong pain in her joints, and during the prayer, the pain in her joints completely disappeared, and also now she can see better. You had a problem with your joints? Yes. And what happened with your joints? I don't know. I just had pain, but now I can move freely. Did you have pain in your shoulder joints? And now you have no pain, both in your shoulder joints and knee joints, all joints together, yes. For how long do you have this pain? For about two or three years. Two or three years, yes. And what has happened with your sight? I had a cataract. You had a cataract? Yes. And that's why you had bad sight? Yes. And what happened? Maybe it's because of my age. But what happened today? You know, when I was sitting there before the service, I couldn't see your team. You couldn't see my team? Yes. And then I started to see them better and better. You started to see them better and better? Yes. It means that if you are with God, it doesn't mean that in old age you have to have cataract, right? Of course not. Praise God. Give God the glory for his love to this lady and bless her father in Jesus' name. 
Ludmila Ivanovna fell and her seventh vertebrae was damaged. As a result, she couldn't bend her fingers on her right hand, but now she can unbend her fingers properly. When did you fall down? It was on the 6th of May. On the 6th of May, yes. And what happened as a result of it? I hit my back on the concrete pathway, and afterwards I couldn't bend these fingers sometimes. Which fingers? These four fingers I couldn't bend. But today I showed my loved ones that now I can bend all of my fingers. Praise God. Give God the glory for this miracle. I'm so glad for you. May God bless you. Praise the Lord. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Pastor Henry Madava accepted this commandment of Jesus Christ as his personal commission. That is why the international ministry, Christ for All Cities, whose president is Pastor Henry, holds several massive services in the countries of Asia, Africa, and Europe every year. God manifests his power in each service in any country of the world. The holding of such services, where thousands of people give their lives to Christ, is possible owing to the donation given by partners of the mission Christ for All Cities. You can become part of a team right now and participate in God's works with your finances and prayers. To do this, you can visit the webpage of the Victory Church and click on the PayPal box or call the number you see on your screen. You'll receive detailed information on how you can become a partner of the international ministry Christ for All Cities. We believe that our partnership will bring lots of fruits for God's kingdom. So how about that? The miracles. Now it's your turn to receive your miracle. Say with me, Father in heaven, give me my miracle in Jesus' name. Now shout out what miracle you need from God. Say it, say it. If it's sickness, finances, family issues, Father, I agree with your people. Let the miracles come in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, God bless you. We love you very much. Stay connected with Jesus and stay connected with us. Tell us what God has done. We want to rejoice together with you. God bless you.